Beach or Sadad, your elite trophy champion, taking on the world's number one and WTA overall champion, Igas Fiontek. Now, these two ladies have played twice. We saw Beach or Sadad take out en route to her Masters Championship. Igas Fiontek in Toronto last year in a three-set thriller. I told you Beecher should win that match. And we saw Iga get revenge this year at the Rolling Girls. Now, Beecher said dad, guys. I think one of the taller players on tour, but one of the best mid-range players on tour. Beatrice Haddad is a baseline bully. She loves to keep her opponents in front of her where she can dictate her cross-court angles with the left that are very difficult to return. Now, Iga's fiance, guys, listen, I watch her game. I study the film and she is doing an amazing job now of handling the deep balls. Now, I said last year during her struggles that, look, something's up with ego. What is going on? Well, then I told you what was going on. She was adding on strength and power and range to handle the deep balls for plays like Sabalenka, for plays like Elena Rabakina, and players like Beecher Sadad. I think Ika's doing an amazing job of playing behind the baseline now. Something she's added to her game. She's also bulked up. Now, I remember Ego was just so thin, right, and fast and explosive. Now, she has put on power. So much like last year when I told you with Elena Rabakina, her serving is just amazing. Can her body hold up? And sure enough, good energy is always right. Elena Rabakina, her shoulder broke down right about three quarters into the year. And she couldn't finish down the stretch. She was unhealthy, right? So one thing I'm looking at with Igas Fiontech this season is her stamina. Trust me, guys. I know what I'm talking about here. So I want to look at Igas Fiontech's stamina. I want to see how her stamina holds up because she's bigger. She's put on some weight. She's put on some muscles. She's focusing on the, on the fast balls, the deep balls. And that requires a change of game. So I felt that the adjustment period happened right around Roland Garros where she was struggling to get her first serves and play only about 50 only about 58, 59%. She started to click again right around, I probably say once the tour left North America, right? Right after US Open, she got things together in China and then she went into Cancun on firing on all cylinders, right? So I want to take a look at Igas Fiontek and how her stamina holds up for the upcoming season because I want to see how she responds when players start to push her deep in these long gruely sets you know i want to see if she's doing things to catch her breath or you know recover a lot better so i'm interested in that that's what i'm focused on this match here i thought igas fiancek did a great job of handling a solid top 20 opponent here that's right she played well mid-range stepping up hitting cross-court winners i think she did well handling beatrice's deep balls and keeping beatrice in front of her where beatrice loves to keep opponents in front of her so she kind of flipped the script with beatrice and that's good game planning right there igas fiontek looked good in this match guys she gets the double break in the first set and the double break in the second set. And her movement looked really, really good, guys. She wins this match. And again, Iga wants to finish you in straight sets. When Iga wins the first set, her win rate for the match is literally like 95%. Iga does not lose a match if she wins the first set. And right now, she gets the victory here. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Get Energy. Beatrice looking like, what happened? The world's number one came to town. Polish fans, show some love, like the video. We'll be right back, guys. More United Cup. We have Brisbane and the return of Naomi Osaka. A lot of people don't know, but Osaka and Iga, they're actually really good friends, guys. And listen, guys, when Iga was coming up, a couple players that she really, really wanted to take out and looked up to, Ashley Barty and Naomi Osaka. Now, Osaka, their last meeting in Miami was pretty darn pretty darn competitive in the first set, but Osaka had a huge drop off. We're going to see how Osaka responds because we just saw Angelique Kerber in a match where she was very competitive, but she didn't have the stamina. Will Naomi Osaka have 
the stamina? That's a big question. That's going to tell a lot of what she's been doing in the offseason in preparation for the new season. Now, looking at her, she's very slim. She looks to be in great shape. So it's going to be great to see how she responds to that game conditioning of her other opponents that have played a full season this past season. But Iga's fiance, guys, gets a victory. She looks good. Beatrice put up a good fight, guys. Beatrice is a very good opponent. But Iga wants revenge, guys. I, I said this. I was one of the only players online to really acknowledge how the Polish team got screwed last year in the United Cup. You can't have a team playing in a, in a separate location and then fly them out literally that same day to play a match okay they didn't have time to warm up get used to the courts and i felt that was a hose job yes the polish team was hosed last year and listen polish fans you got to come here and start showing love to these amazing ega videos that i create okay i created a couple ega videos this month amazing videos where you at okay you, you you can't it can't just be about damage control when ega has a bad match you're coming online because you know, the word is in the tennis community that the Polish fans are becoming a very toxic fan base. Look, I call it how it is, okay? That's my job. Come here, show some love. Iga's fiance gets the victory. She's through, guys. And look, she's on a mission. I'm telling you guys, you better watch out for the Polish team. We may have Polish versus the USA in the championship. It's very much so possible. Iga is on a mission. Beware, ladies and gentlemen. Tennis in a minute. We'll be right back.